<laughs> Is that where they are? <laughs> right, uh, let's have a crack. Just like the beer will get you to the fight and the rum will make you think you can win it. Are you okay? You love your boat, it'll love you back. Tim Dean, um, owner and captain of the Calypso. Uh, 47 O'Brien, we run it out of Port Stephens and uh, pretty well the whole east coast, up to Cairns, Lizard Island uh, for the heavy tackle season. So yeah, started fishing with my father and uh, predominantly for the tuna back then and um, if you caught a marlin that was something that you know, God sent I guess. Back then, fishing with my father was a 16 foot savage. And uh, yeah, they used to stand up and clap in the pub when he walked in after a southerly buster sometimes. I've been tied to the seat in there so I wouldn't go overboard and don't tell your mother. But, um, we uh, migrated up to Port Stephens, mid 80s I guess, and fished the first inner club um, back in 85. And pretty well been here ever since. So when I bought the boat, I wanted to get the heartbeat right, which is your engine room. So we started there and replaced everything. New engines, new gen set, new boxes, new everything down there. And then up we went, you know, and the last thing we'll do is probably give it a respray at some stage. But for a boat that was built in 2008, it's Mickey Mouse, you know, and the way the boys look after it, it's credit to them. And um, you love your boat, it'll love you back. But a spectacular liverboard boat. We've got a stateroom forward. We've got identical en suites each side, and we've got uh, identical bunk rooms each side. I sleep up here when we're on the reef, and the crew sleep in the salon, and the guests have got all the, the front end down there. So all the farting and snoring's their own. They can have it. Generator runs all the, the electrics and the cooking gear. Gyros have been around for a while, and I've seen a lot of them go in boats, and they're all good when they're working. The way this boat's set up, the ARG 250T, it suited us. It drops straight in there, it's about as big, it looks like a generator. Weighs about 700 kilo, spins at 20,000 RPM. Uh, big weight and it's centrifugal force that as your boat heels over, it'll dampen that roll and bring you back there. So the reason I put it in, yeah, comfort for the crew, myself, the, the clients. Anything you can do to make it a bit easier on yourself and your boat, you're going to be doing it a lot longer, especially when you start getting them these things for 100 days straight. I always use the Raymarine navigation gear and I've floated in and out of the sounding over the years, but since these guys have got uh, this new stuff, the chirp and the low chirp and all these processes going, it's just pure Raymarine and it's uh, an incredible, incredible bloody piece of equipment. You can put whatever you want on any screen, there's cameras there, you keep an eye on your crew, you can you can watch Netflix on it if you want. So what I've got here is I've got a 24 inch screen, then I've got a 16, I've got a 12, and in the bridge I've got two 12s. And I can repeat anything there, and I've got my autopilot here. Uh, I like the fact that uh, we can use the side scan, um, we can use the load chirp, I've got a 40 degree beam, it covers everything. And on this gear, the 200 on the 275, just a standard old 200, it marks the marlin. It'll tell you exactly what's going on. They're not as crisp and as clear and as cut like a chirp mark, but it's big and it's bold and you'll see it. You know, and that's, that's what you want. Otherwise, you'll spend your whole time looking there and those chirp marks are so detailed and they're so fine. But the big old 50 and the 200, it'll mark them there and you'll spend more time looking where you should be rather than there. The high definition radar I have on this thing will look up a fly's ass at 10 miles, you know, it's good and I can mark birds with it out to six, eight miles. So when you're trolling off the coral sea, when you leave the reef edge and you're looking for that tuna aggregation, you find the birds, you find the tuna, you find the big blacks. And uh, user friendly, that's what I've always liked about Raymarine gear and since day one they've always been the machines with the lowest amount of buttons to touch 
down. It's very, very simple and um, it just suits me. I've just found this stuff faultless and I've travelled a lot of miles and it hasn't let me down. And I need that. I like coming home. And we haven't lost anyone for weeks so I want to sort of keep that record in tack for another week. <laughs> Predominantly it's a live bait fishery. When there's lots of them there and there's not as many boats, you can get away with your skip baits and your teaser fish and all that. But black marlin, they like to hang on those reefs up current where the bait sits, you know, same as all major pelagics, I guess. And uh, there's swarms of them when they come in and the currents are right. And there's so many spots just north of here around Broughton Island, all those little reefs, the Gibber and Edith and up to Seal Rocks, you know, and even the islands here. Uh, there's enough area to hold a lot of boats and to hold a lot of fish when they're there, so that's what makes it good. That big bay up there at Broughton Island, that bait gets jammed in there and the fish won't leave till they've eaten every, every last one of them. La Nina, lots of fresh out of those big rivers, dirties that water up a bit, but black marlin don't really worry about the dirty water too much, as long as they've got a feed, you'll catch them in the sewer, as long as there's bait there. Yeah, picked up the vets at uh, 7 o'clock, went to sea, we had 18 boats, which um, like I keep saying, everyone says, oh you do a good thing there, well yeah it is a good thing, but we send them, we've got to mend them and a day out fishing helps. It's the biggest activity Soldier On does out of 2,000 activities a year. Uh, we went out to sea, I think there's four or five marlin caught for the day, uh, a lot of kingfish, dolphin fish, but it's more around the day out and yes for those people that are struggling physically and mentally with what they've seen and done but also for their families for a day off and a day out you know so they can just have a breather as well because it's, it's it's tough mental health issues you know it's not just in that industry either not just in veterans it's it's everywhere and especially with men because we don't talk about it and i've worked in that, that mining industry as well and it, it's really prevalent there and it, trust me it's it's right through the Marlin fleet too, you know. You've got to be aware of it and say, yeah, are you okay? We had Phil and Paul on board, both sergeants. And I think they're both army, army sergeants. And um, Phil's biggest fish, uh, I think it was a snapper, he was telling me about, and all he wanted to do was catch a Marlin. And uh, he did that yesterday. He caught a black Marlin that jumped its ass off around the boat. So you just want to keep that line tight with the reel of handle when you can, buddy. Reel on him. <laughs> Up and down, that's it. That's the way. That's the way. Don't go all balls to the wall and be a bully with a little fucking rooster. He'll grow up and he'll kick your ass up there on the reef one year. If you upset him now, he'll, he'll remember you. <laughs> Wait till they're, they're fucking 1,200 pound doing that jump on a leader. But uh, they were stoked, you couldn't punch the smile off Phil's face. They've had a crack a day and to have the jets fly over at the end, you know. I don't know many blokes that have got mates that have got fighter jets, but I'm one of them. It's pretty cool. Another thing, people don't say no, you know, and they just go and grab the keys of an F-35 and next minute they're over the top of us, <laughs> as long as they get them back. Thank you.